Now uh, to our newsmaker today, we're joined by Dr. Fahim Yunus, Chief of Infectious Diseases, University of Maryland, to talk about a whole range of issues uh, concerning coronavirus. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, uh, there have been several studies that have indicated COVID antibodies disappear after a few weeks or months. We were just discussing this with Dr. Eric, and this has raised a lot of worries about reinfection, but doctors are also talking about T cells providing a protection. If you can also tell us a bit about this. Yeah, I don't think the antibodies tell the whole story. It's very common for antibodies to decline, but the body is very smart. Human body cannot be fooled twice easily because there are multiple limbs, multiple arms of immunity. B cells are which produce the antibody, but then there are T cells. T cells are more like memory cells. They remember an invader. They will remember a virus. So if you get the same virus second time, the body is prepared. The body knows exactly which antibody to generate again very quickly. So I do not think people should be worried about reinfections. At a test positive, again, does not be infected. Usually that's the dead viral genome, which is still lurking around in the respiratory system. And these PCR tests are highly sensitive tests, so they will pick that small little part of the virus and become positive. All right, uh, Doctor, also, what are your hopes regarding the vaccine? There's this race across the world uh, to, uh, uh, to arrive at that vaccine. Moderna vaccine is in the final uh, stage of the trials, and then the challenge also is to, after that, provide it to the public at large. I think since the beginning of this pandemic, I've said we should avoid the extreme. One extreme is denial, where people think it's just a flu, and the other extreme is panic. Once again, it will happen with the vaccine as well. One extreme is extreme happiness, as if a button will be pressed and the pandemic will go. The other extreme is, is oh, the industry scam. Vaccines typically take five to 10 years to develop. So in my career, I have never seen one vaccine, let alone 20 vaccines, getting developed in the year. So I think that's great optimism. I've never seen so many countries come together and try new technology. I've never seen governments give this kind of financial support to vaccines. I have never seen this kind of scaling and manufacturing. So all of that is superb. It's very good. So we need to be cautious. Developing a vaccine is one thing, but then getting it to your arm is another. There's a very long chain. They say there are many a slip between a cup and a lip. So we need to be careful when we promise. It will be available. I believe FDA will give it approval. It's already reviewing the data. Where we may run into challenges, number one, we still have to test. We will have to see what's the efficacy of this vaccine. Is it going to be? It's not going to be 100%. So people need to understand that. There may be, there will be people who will get the vaccine and get the coronavirus infection again. That will happen, I can tell you today. Chances are there will be much milder okay. infection. Somebody who was gonna end up in an ICU will probably just have a fever at home and recover. So it will create milder illness, number one. Number two, access. We don't know how this vaccine will be distributed. Remember, we could not give people enough PPE or enough coronavirus tests to assume that we will be able to give 7 billion vaccines is, is again, not logical. So once again, we will have to remain patient and wait in line because people who are at the highest risk, the essential workers are likely going to get first, nursing home, elderly, you know, compromised, and then at some stage it will get to general population. I think what is important for people to remember, if this was a cricket match, I think we're still in the first innings. If this is a one-day match, we have not gotten to the halftime. All right. Well, that's a very sobering thought there. Uh, Doctor, also there are fears about the impact that uh, coronavirus has on young people, also on children. There's some cases of lung damage. Uh, we're told about this Kawasaki syndrome, children developing very serious illnesses. Are these uh, very rare cases? Yeah, there are multiple nuances. I will say there are many shades of gray, and let's look at them one by one. Number one, there's we all believe that 30 to 40 percent of people with coronavirus don't even have symptoms. So forget about long-term disease. They don't even have symptoms of the original disease. So that's hope 40 percent of people right off the bat.
<laughs> then we all believe that 80 to 90 percent of the people don't even need a hospitalization. The third part is when you have long term, and then we know that symptom recovery is small. Remember, your body just fought against a pandemic, not a flu, pandemic. It took physical and mental toll. What I'm seeing in my patients, I've now treated mm. hundreds of patients, that it takes longer to recover. This is not a cold that goes away in a week. You may get better 70 to 80 percent in two weeks, but the last 20 percent recovery may be very slow. It may take two or three months, but you will recover. Will there be a small number of people who have long term impact? That is cool. uh, Now, the way I look at that is somebody who is likely to die in an ICU. Instead of dying, they stayed in an ICU on a ventilator for a month and got to go home. If their lungs are not 100% functioning, now it's a question of perspective. You can say, well, they have long term damage. And I can say they get to live. They were going to. So I think there are multiple aspects here. We need to empathize. Yes, there will be a small number, but whether it will be 0.1% or 1% or 10%, nobody knows that number. So I believe that we, again, should understand all the shades of gray. All right, that gives a very comforting uh, perspective as well. But doctor, uh, now we're hearing about what's being described as a second wave or resurgence of coronavirus uh, in Europe. Uh, there have also been talks of uh, mutations of the virus. So how worried should we be about this? That's different for different viruses. HIV mutations are different than influenza mutations that are different than coronavirus mutations. So far, the good thing is Coronavirus mutates, but these are non-consequential mutations. They do not change the mode of transmission. It remains droplet. They do not change the severity of this infection and most likely will have no impact on the vaccine. When you see a bunch of human beings in the bazaar, they all look different, but they're all human. They all eat and drink and they all have the same lifespan. So look at coronavirus similarly. There are tons of mutations. There may be little differences in all of them, but at the end of the day, they're all coronaviruses. They all live and die by the same rule, which is good for us. That means our treatment, our understanding of the virus does not change by mutations. Yes, in Hollywood, you get X-Men, but in the world, coronavirus is dull and boring when it comes to mutations, and that's very good. All right. Well, Dr. Yunus, thank you so much for speaking to us today.